is so much that we don't know about the Chinese experience in Oregon. And when we first started doing this project, we were focusing on kind of the traditional topics, mining and railroad. There were folks that came over that had all different backgrounds, that had all different experiences once they were here. Some of them were very successful. Some folks were very integrated into these communities and really important members and beloved. The project has been doing a lot of work up in the eastern part of the state where there was historically like 40% of the population was of Chinese descent. In these early parts of the state where gold was the early economic driver, many of the Chinese American residents were here for decades. We realized that we really needed to go out into these communities in the rural parts of the state to kind of access that history. One of the secrets to the success of the Oregon Chinese Diaspora Project is because it's this grassroots multi-agency collaboration. So by bringing in um, the federal partners, state partners, and local um, agencies and organizations, we're really able to tap into all of their networks, all of their resources. Every different one of these agencies and organizations has something different to bring to the table. We've embedded citizen scientists into our programs through Passport and Time programs through the Forest Service. And we've also done field schools to bring in students and volunteers that way as well. And we've also embedded artists into our project through the Portland Chinatown Museum's Artists in Residency program. And then we've also worked with our other partners like the Oregon Historical Society on other ways to get this information out there. We also have an Asian American Advisory Committee, which is great because that really um, ensures that the work that we're doing in these federal lands and with these federal partners is relevant to the community and is something that is meaningful and accessible. But it's also a way for us to talk about Chinese exclusion and anti-Chinese sentiment and the ways in which those discriminatory and racist laws and legislations, they perpetuated interpersonal violence sometimes, but also equally important structural and institutional violence towards Chinese residents in these communities. I think it's really shifted the way in which some of these communities think about the past. But one of the things that to me has been the most exciting about this project is all the different ways in which working together we can tell this story. I feel like it's really expanded our reach into the community.